Matt Girding, call the June 3rd, 2024 City Council meeting for the City of Summersworth to order. Uh, clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Pepin. Yep. Vincent? Here. Gibson? Here. Parody Cottonzero? Here. Misho? Here. Witham? Here. Goodwin? Here. Cameron? Here. Austin? Here. Councillor Gibson will lead the council in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic of Next on the agenda is the recognition of our indigenous people, our native ancestral Americans. This meeting is taking place on Indikina, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki peoples, past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land, waterways, living beings, and the Alnabuk, the people who stewarded Indikina throughout the generations. Um, item four on the agenda our scheduled public hearings. We have one tonight. Tonight we have a public hearing on Ordinance 15-24, which is a supplemental appropriation to design and construct a crosswalk at the northerly intersection of Constitutional Way and High Street, which, if approved, would amend the annual budget by appropriating an additional $57,750 to the Municipal Transportation Fund to pay for a, cro a crosswalk across High Street at the northerly side of the intersection with Constitutional Way. Um, I will open the public hearing on Ordinance 15-24. Is there anyone who wishes to speak towards Ordinance 15-24? Yes, please come on up. State your name and the ward in which you live, please. Hello. Make sure the green the light button. is on. If not, press the button. Okay, thank you. Hello. Um, my name is Carly O'Brien Hart, and I reside in Ward Number Two in Summersworth, and I support Ordinance 15-24 for supplemental propriety to design and construct a crosswalk at the northerly intersection of Constitutional Way and High Street for pedestrian safety, pedestrian walkability, as well as general traffic safety. As you may know. Enhanced signing and pavement markings can reduce pedestrian injury due to crashes. The financial impact of crashes requires the use of a number of town resources and can be very expensive. An additional benefit of adding a crosswalk to this intersection is that it would also enhance accessibility. Title II of the ADA requires state and local governments to make pedestrian crossings accessible to people with disabilities by providing ease of access and a curb ramp. As it stands now, the crosswalks are not located very close to the, um, the crosswalks are not located very close to the parking spaces um, that are accessible. Disability is not always visible. I have multiple sclerosis. There are times where I have to use assistive walking devices due to mobility issues, and other times, especially during the summer months, where I need to avoid the heat because of the heat's devastating um, impact on my autoimmune system. So I hope that you can also consider pedestrian accessibility in addition to general safety as you're deliberating this issue. Thank you very much to our city council for this public hearing. I appreciate your attention and your service to Summersworth. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak towards Ordinance 15-24? Yes, please come on up. State your name and the ward in which you live. Hello, Council. Uh, my name is Kenneth Ferrer. I'm at Ward 2. <laughs> uh, I'm here to support the ordinance. Um, for the design and construction of a uh, crosswalk on the intersection of uh, Constitutional Way and High Street. Um, I believe that increasing uh, pedestrian safety and um, accessibility is it's just a very important and very valuable thing for any town to do, is, and especially the town I live in. Um, so I'd like to just voice my support. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak towards Ordinance 15-24? Anybody else? Okay, 
Seeing no one else, I will close the public hearing on Ordinance 15-24. All right, next up we have item five, which is comments by visitors. Summers of City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinion and views at council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7-C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the council wishes to suspend the rules. Speaker shall not enter into a debate with any person, the mayor, council members, city manager, or department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight? Anyone who wishes to speak? All right, seeing none. We'll move to agenda item six, which is the approval of the consent calendar. The chair will obtain a motion to approve the consent calendar, which includes the minutes of the city council meeting held on May 20th, 2024. Do I have a motion? Councilor Austin? I'll move that we adopt a consent calendar. Councilor Austin moves that the consent calendar be adopted as presented, seconded by Councilor Gibson. Uh, question before the council is the adoption of the consent calendar. If you are in favor of the motion, you will state by saying aye. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Eyes appear to have it. Eyes have it. Consent calendar is adopted. Item seven on the agenda is comments by city councilors. Do I have any comments this evening by councilors? Councilor Gibson. Or, that's the third time I've done that tonight. Yeah, I'm no so worries. Sorry, Councilor Gibson. Jeez. Um, I just, I guess, a point of order uh, with my questions. I, I've received a number of correspondence um, on Ordinance 15 24. Um, when would be the most appropriate time to read those into the record? Uh, great question. I think now, if you would like to. Sure. All right, so give me one moment here to pull these up. Can I challenge you on that? Sure, sure. Uh, I, I didn't I, know the I think it is so. conversation and debate uh, pertaining to the resolution or to the ordinance. Okay, fair. Uh, I think it would be then. Otherwise, people could have submitted the comments uh, directly to the city clerk's office to be read into the record great during point. the great point. public hearing. I think that's fair. Councillor Goodwin, do you provide? Uh, as long as I have an opportunity to read these comments, I don't care. Okay, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, other comments by councillors? <laughs> All right, seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item eight, which is communications. Tonight we have a letter of resignation to read submitted by Ward 3 School Board Member Susan Tierney. City Clerk, would you please read the letter? I am taking this opportunity to formally and publicly announce my resignation from the SAU 56 school board as the Ward 3 representative. I have made this decision so that I can spend more time with my family as we have many exciting and important changes on the horizon. I would like to share some brief comments and regret that I cannot convey these in person, but I am attending an underclassmen award ceremony where my daughter will re be receiving an award. I also think it is appropriate that time and attention be rightly focused on these being rec those being recognized for their many, many years of service to the district. I have truly valued my time serving on the board with my fellow board members, a genuinely dedicated and caring group. When I first felt the call to serve the community in this way, I had no idea what to expect. Those who were with us three years ago know what an eventful journey it has been from a school board that had mostly brand new faces being handed as its first policy, a policy with issues still being debated at the state level, to challenging emotional discussions and decisions around district leadership. Through it all, I am proud of the cohesiveness of this board. We didn't always agree and we weren't always quiet, but we always maintained respect for each other and for the perspectives we each brought as representatives of the diverse community here in Summersworth. I have always felt that our board's ability to listen to one another could be a model for the rest of our country. I'd like to thank the amazing administrators I have gotten to know over these years, Chris, Michael, James, Jen, Liza, Kate, Devin, Max, and Caitlin. The kids are in such good hands with you. Your passion and dedication are clear. Katie, thank you for working all those numbers that never made sense to me, no matter how hard I tried. Alice, thank you for your ever-present cheerfulness, especially when I sent you meeting notes at the last minute. Lou, you stepped in when we needed you. You are leaving the district on steady ground, and I have no doubt the new leadership will be able to build on your success. We have such an amazing combination of strengths. Todd, often the last to speak, but always insightful. You would sit back and listen, and as you like to say, pump the brakes when things were starting to move a little fast. Barbara, you were often the first to speak, but you were always passionate and always trying to think of what was best for the students and teachers. 
Marsha, always a voice of reason, analysis, and keeping us focused on our goals. Carrie, the biggest cheerleader for this district and its students, proud mama bear for all the kids. Crystal, Sarah, and Gemma, I didn't get to work with you that much, but I have appreciated getting to know you and have no doubt your unique perspectives will continue to be an asset to the district. Maggie, I know I told you many times, especially during that challenging last term, that you were the right person for the right time. Your calmness and level-headedness under duress is truly an asset and, exa and exactly what was needed. You have always been there to patiently help and support board members, students, parents, and the community. Thank you for your guidance and leadership. We all did great work together, and I wish you all the absolute best with the exciting changes ahead for this district. God bless. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Point of order. Um, sure. Did I miss here? This is a resignation from SAU 56. Yes, this was the school board resignation rece we received from Ward 3 school board member Susan Tierney. She's, we are not dealing with SAU 56. We are dealing with the Summersworth School Board. Correct, yes. So the resignation from SAU 56 is not ours. I think it might be a typographical error that it's saying that, but this individual school board member is I a member I understand of the intent. I'm just clarifying. I will check after tonight's meeting to see if we need another letter to clarify that error. But uh, as far as I understand, we are moving forward with the resignation. As is outlined in the city charter, vacancies will be open and posted for applications for 14 days. So after the 14-day application period, all applicants will be sent to us as here at City Council for approval. If you are interested in this position, watching at home or here tonight, please apply at the City Clerk's office. All right, item nine is presentations of petitions and disposal thereof by reference or otherwise. We have none. Uh, next on the agenda is the Mayor's report. Um, I'd first like to uh, mention that we are, will be having a flag raising uh, this Thursday, June 6th uh, at 4.30 at Citizens Place, which is right outside here at uh, City Hall. Um, all are welcome. We'll be raising the Pride flag to celebrate uh, Pride Month. Um, I'd also like to say happy Pride Month to everybody. Uh, just started this past weekend on Saturday. Um, Pride is both a time of celebration and reflection. Um, we certainly celebrate the many achievements our community has seen, uh, the love that we have for each other, the beauty of the lives that we live in so many different ways. Uh, we celebrate diversity, acceptance. Uh, we host parades and flag raisings like the one that we'll have this week. Uh, we attend pride parties, we go dancing, uh, we hug our loved ones. Uh, we reflect on the progress that we've made on uh, those who have lived and those who have died before us to help advance our rights. We reflect on the current state of the world, and we remind ourselves that, unfortunately, the rights we hold so dear, uh, the acceptance we need within our community, and the love that we cherish is tenuous and fragile. Um, which is why I feel that Pride Month is also uh, important for awareness. Uh, LGBTQ rights are being attacked across this country, including here in New Hampshire. Uh, according to the ACLU in New Hampshire, in just this year alone, there were 16 different bills that attempted to target and restrict the rights of LGBTQ plus people. Uh, these attempts came in many forms, whether it was attempting to limit access to health care, um, whether it was restricting educational freedoms, whether it was forcibly outing children who may not be ready or could be endangered if done. Um, in fact, there are currently a number of bills that are headed to the desk of the governor that would further work to restrict or limit rights of LGBTQ plus people, including, if you're interested in emailing or calling the governor, HB 1205, HB 1312, and HB 619. Um, all is to say, uh, New Hampshire is not as welcoming as we'd like to think. Beyond these attempts to limit civil rights, bigotry is still alive and well. Hate seems empowered, to be honest. It feels scary and more in your face than it has been in a long time. I, for example, as the only openly gay mayor in the state of New Hampshire, as far as I am aware, am frequently targeted uh, with hateful messages from faceless internet warriors. Uh, so in the spirit of awareness, 
and perhaps as a sobering reminder of why Pride Month is still so, so, so important. I would like to read uh, to you all a few of these posts. Uh, this is not going to be fun or enjoyable, um, but it is important. So, quick content warning for folks. Uh, if this type of hate speech is particularly impactful for you, I encourage you to take a break and come back in a few minutes. I'll give you a few moments. So, I recently posted a picture of my family with a caption that said, happy pride from my family to yours. Pretty simple. Uh, to this, I received the following messages. Why are you such a disgusting pervert? You are not a couple. You are not a family. You cannot start a family with two men. You can just adopt and pretend. Thank you for not dressing up in dildos and leather straps. Your counterparts make you all look so bad. <coughs> On another post I made recently congratulating our trans state legislator, Jerry Cannon, for her retirement from the New Hampshire State House, I was also told to get mental help so that, uh, because I desperately needed it, uh, and that I am an ass clown and that LGBTQ plus people have serious psychic disorders and should not be in elected office. These are awful, uh, vile, and to be perfectly honest, really painful things to read aloud. Uh, make no mistake about that, please. Um, but I promise you that this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so, 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 so many worse things that are being told to people in this community every day. I am thankful that I am a happy, loved, and for the most part, uh, unaffected person by these comments. Um, but, and it, like honestly, most of the time I don't actually read them and I rarely pay them any mind. Um, but when I do, which is pretty rare, I often imagine how I would have felt if I was a little less confident um, or a little less open about myself and my family and who I am. And nearly every time I read these things, I cannot help but get sick to my stomach thinking about how LGBT, uh, LGBTQ plus children who are out there and how they must feel when they read similar comments or hear similar things. It's devastating. I imagine it's terrifying for them and probably really stifling for who they are as a person. Um, and so I cannot stress enough, again, in this moment of advocacy, uh, that it is these types of messages that are responsible for the deaths of numerous children. Suicide alone is the second leading cause of death in just children aged 10 to 14. And LGBTQ plus children are four times more likely than those children to attempt suicide. Uh, estimates are that over 40% of LGBTQ plus youth have considered uh, attempting suicide in their lives. That's nearly half. And for trans youth, it is half. So it is no secret that this hatred is responsible for this. And it scares the living hell out of me uh, as an educator and as a parent. Um, and I imagine it is difficult for them to grow up today hearing these things and seeing these laws. So I sit here before you during Pride 2024 uh, asking that you use your time this month to lift up the voices and the lives of your neighbors, your friends, and your family who may be a part of our community. Make them feel just a little extra loved. Talk to them about their struggles if they're open to it. Certainly ask first. Um, listen to their stories if they have them. Um, and just know that there's a lot of people in our community that have a lot of things to be proud about. Um, and I think sadly an increasing number of things to be afraid of. Um, so together with the support of each other and the allies in our lives, I think we can kind of tackle some of this bigotry and make these gains uh, just a little bit more in the direction that I think we as a community and as a city know that we all need to be headed. Um, so, thank you. 
Um, I would also like to remind people that if you are experiencing a mental health crisis, please call or text the New Hampshire Rapid uh, Access Point line. The number for that is 833-710-6477. Again, that's 833-710-6477. Also, if you or someone you know is experiencing thoughts of suicide, please uh, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 988. Again, that's 988. Your Honor. Yes. If I may comment. Sure. I'd like to um, say thank you very much for bringing that to our attention, that information. And obviously the people who are putting this out to you do not know who you are because you're, you and your family are good people. Thank you. I you serve that. and you do well. Thank you very much. It means a lot. I, I promise you I did not, uh, as much as I appreciate the comments, I did not bring it up for, you know, uh, condolences, if you will. But it's more just for letting folks know that it's real. It's very, very real. And as fun and as cheerful as pride often is, there's a dark side to living this life sometimes, unfortunately. And it doesn't come from the people that live it. It comes from the people that, unfortunately, hate people in their community. So, but thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, I had another announcement that I forgot before I went into the the deep stuff, I apologize. <laughs> um, the Historic District Advisory meeting, uh, we have a, a meeting scheduled this Thursday at 5 o'clock. So if you are a member of that or would like to attend, I hope to see you there. Uh, this concludes my mayor's report. Uh, next on the agenda is item 11, which is reports of standing committees. First up is the Finance Committee, Councillor Witham. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, a difficult pivot, uh, to be sure. Uh, <coughs> Finance Committee met on May 21st at 4 p.m. Uh, um, three members were in attendance. Uh, we did have to excuse Councillor Pepin. He was away fishing, I believe. <laughs> so, uh, so, good for him. Uh, real briefly, uh, there was a reaffirmation of the decision to uh, stop the water line replacement project, which is in the final stages of its engineering right now, uh, at Netto Street. Uh, the original plan was to replace the water line from Indigo Hill Road all the way to the Rollinsford Town Line. However, when you get to Netto Street, which is not quite halfway, maybe a bit more than halfway, uh, Main Street becomes uh, the property, if you will, of the State of New Hampshire Department of Transportation. Uh, they maintain from the Rollinsford line to Netto Street. Uh, the State of New Hampshire, uh, despite numerous attempts to convince them otherwise, will not allow us to put the new water line uh, under the street. Uh, they wanted it off of the roadway, which would have required us to have numerous easements, uh, would have required us to cut down many trees, would have had significant wetlands impacts, would have required us to move utility poles, uh, so on and so forth. Just very expensive, cumbersome, difficult. Um, and uh, the, the committee, uh, 3-0, uh, reaffirmed that we will stop the water line replacement project at Netto Street, and we will leave the old line in pr place under Main Street from there to the Rollinsford Town Line. There will be appropriate valving and stuff put in place, so if at some point down the road we decided that uh, we wanted to take over Main Street, which was an option that the Department of Transportation offered to us that we could uh, do that at that time. Uh, to that end, uh, we've asked the city manager to work with uh, Public Works Director Babinski and our city engineer uh, to look at uh, providing us with some cost estimates to do some evaluation of that state-owned section of Main Street. Uh, to find out what kind of cost would be involved with us taking over that uh, section of roadway at some point in the future. So we're going to do a little bit more exploration, if you will. Uh, maybe it is a section of street that we would like to take over at some point in the future, but we did not want to hold up the water line replacement project, at least up until Netto Street. Uh, I think all committee members shared our disdain with the state of New Hampshire's uh, sort of heels in the mud uh, approach to this whole thing, but that's where we're at. We discussed the fiscal year 2025, it's a current fiscal year that we're under for vehicle replacement. 
Uh, it called for replacement of three city vehicles, um, an unmarked police vehicle, a pickup truck for public works, parks maintenance, and a vehicle to be used by the city engineer. Uh, city staff has done some uh, further look at their vehicle fleet, uh, and we'd like to modify this approach to uh, provide the rec department with a uh, small transit van because they carry a lot of equipment and oftentimes can't keep it inside. Uh, it's more practical for them. Uh, we'd like a pickup truck for code enforcement and the city engineer would use what is currently a car used by code enforcement. So we're going to shift some vehicles around. The number of vehicles to be purchased are the same. Uh, so really uh, no difference there. Uh, we lease these vehicles typically over a three or five year period. So uh, it was just a matter of getting endorsement of the, the change in how the vehicles would be utilized and the committee had no objection to that. Uh, committee dis then discussed uh, pay raises for non-union personnel. We uh, uh, were fine uh, past 3-0 to provide a 6% cost of living adjustment for all of our non-union employees. Uh, that would also apply to our water and wastewater personnel that have a so-called Me Too clause in their contract. Uh, this, by the way, does align with the contracts that we've approved for our other uh, organized labor groups here in the city. Uh, under reporting, uh, Finance Director Smith said that uh, as we're coming to the end of uh, FY24 uh, budget that uh, we're, we're in fine shape. We may need a budget transfer ordinance uh, to help with public works as we had a couple of added expenditures there. One was a catch basin replacement at High and Blackwater. Uh, the other was the purchase of a zero turn lawnmower for the department. Um, we're gonna let city staff determine what that transfer ordinance would look like uh, and submit it as appropriate. Uh, the committee uh, was unanimous in their agreement to support whatever necessary transfer ordinance would be needed. Uh, at um, uh, the next meeting here. Under miscellaneous, uh, city manager talked about uh, upgrading uh, communications lines from the two standpipes, the one up by the Noble Pines on Hamilton Street, the other on Rocky Hill Road, uh, in a associated controllers. These would be done through fiber optic, through breeze line. Uh, Laviolette controls <coughs> proposed an amount of $16,333 uh for that equipment uh in the committee uh approved uh moving forward to award that contract as it's within our spending authority uh, next item we discussed was the resolution uh, 4924 regarding parking meters in the downtown that the mayor forwarded to, uh, to us for review um, we had a very robust discussion about uh, potential cost impacts of buying the meters, could we lease the meters, uh, would uh, enforcement activities to go along with the meters offset that cost, and we really had a, a lot of questions around that, and uh, it would be, be a lot of work for the city manager and his staff to sort of crunch those numbers. Uh, we felt that there were probably uh, consulting experts, if you will, that do this type of work that could do that sort of analysis for us, we would do an analysis like that using contracted services for many other city projects. Uh, so, at the end of the day, the committee supports uh, uh, not supporting the resolution, uh, but supporting the city manager getting uh, cost estimates for qualified uh, consultants to do this parking analysis for us. The other thing that we thought about is that it would take the politics out of it to some degree. It would be an independent third party uh, conducting this analysis, and we just thought it was a better approach. So uh, our uh, recommendation is to, when we get to resolution 4924 tonight, is to shoot that down, and ultimately there'll be uh, new language coming forward to support uh, contracting with a consultant to conduct such an analysis. So that's the... Reader's Digest version of, of that. Uh, the other was Ordinance 1524 and Resolution 5124, sort of companion uh, ordinances and resolutions for the construction of uh, a new crosswalk at High Street and Constitutional Way. Uh, the committee supports uh, it in its entirety, and we supported it unanimously. Uh, 
thought process there is that we're never going to have a, a time where it's cheaper, where we could leverage the contractor, Grinnies and Sons, that's doing the Constitutional Way project. Uh, there's never been an aversion to adding a crosswalk there in terms of pedestrian safety and what it would bring. Uh, the aversion, I think, over the years has been this notion of water runoff from Hamilton Street coming up onto the sidewalk across the street, this side of High Street. Uh, but I think Councillor Goodwin pointed it out well at a prior meeting that uh, various engineering controls such as additional uh, storm drains can help with that. Uh, that's included as part of this project. Uh, so we felt comfortable from uh, that perspective and from the financing perspective that this is a, a very doable project. So uh, why stand in the way? Uh, that concludes the summary of that meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Government Operations Committee, Chairman Mishu. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Government Arts met on Tuesday, May 28th at 4.30 p.m. here at City Hall. First on the agenda was to approve the uh, previous meeting of Government Arts, which was on October 31st, 2023. Second on the agenda was this administrative changes and COLAs for non-union employees, wastewater, employees also. We agreed to forward the full council to a recommendation of a 6% COLA for the city non-union members as the city union members will be receiving the same amount this year. Also, we approved the recommendation from the city manager and staff for Appendix I with uh, regards to adding the deputy fire chief title, grade, and salary into the schedule as well as the assistant library director and a change of title from the library adult assistant to the library services assistant. Third on the agenda was a zoning ordinance, Chapter 19, Backyard Chickens. After a lengthy discussion, the community decided not to change the ordinance. Fourth on the agenda was a process for a citizen petition for a zoning ordinance change. City manager reported that the city staff is working with the city attorney on this one and they're not ready to come forward to government ops, so that has been pushed out to the next meeting. Fifth in the agenda was a city ordinance, chapter 29, administrative code and council rules and regulation. The discussion was on how we could change the process on selecting positions for all boards, commissions, and committees to ensure that the city is appointing the most qualified individuals. Council Goodwin mentioned that the Community Outreach and Communication Committee will be meeting that day and they could offer additional ideas. City Manager Mr. Belmore stated that he will wait for to hear from the committees and bring back a draft for review for the next Government Ops Committee. On the miscellaneous, we discussed on an issue on e-bikes riding through the city streets and sidewalks. And after that, uh, City uh, Councilor Cameron moved to adjourn, second by uh, Councilor Goodwin, and we adjourned at 5.26 p.m. Perfect. Thank you. Next up is Economic Development Committee, Chairman Goodwin. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the Economic Development Committee met directly before, or before this meeting um, in Council Chambers uh, this, tonight. Um, uh, we had a pretty full agenda, uh, which included a conversation around updating Chapter 31, the Community Revitalization Tax Release and Relief Incentive. Um, the state has updated uh, the RSA at the state level to enable municipalities to have a broader um, uh, scope for uh, utilization, utilizing this incentive program uh, specifically for building housing um, and so we the committee voted in favor of um, asking staff to take a first pass at updating the um, chapter 31 ordinance to reflect the latest um, uh, powers authorized to us through the state uh, and including expanding the district to new areas for um, its uh, additional housing uh, this was an item that was uh, flagged in the recent master planning uh, master plan update uh, the housing chapter um, so we uh, we voted in favor of that um, in a similar mold we had a lengthy discussion as well around a sort of more general broad update to the zoning code um, the again the housing chapter recently adopted to the master plan 
identified a number of recommendations to the zoning code to encourage um, housing development and to simplify our zoning code. Economic development's interest in this is that we, uh, housing is good for economic development, but also that the code uh, by and large is uh, complex. It's something that grows and evolves over time and um, needs pruning from time to time or simplifying. Um, and it feels like now is the time to do that. So we um, essentially request that the mayor call <laughs> a joint meeting of the relevant parties uh, to begin the conversation around a comprehensive zoning update. Um, so ZBA planning board, housing task force, you got it. Um, we reviewed uh, a possible workshop with the Stratford Economic Development Corporation, um, which is TBD, um, but we are, we're interested in essentially just in general learning about um, uh, programs that are available to uh, businesses and the city to enable um, you know, economic development to occur. So we're just trying to you know, continue our own education. Um, we also discussed uh, rebranding and signage as a, as a goal for the fall. The committee had previously discussed um, hosting a design contest for a new logo and, uh, and city flag and thought that engaging the school board uh, and the SAU in the conversation in the hopes of having um, our students um, participate in that as well as having it open to the public would, could be a fun uh, community engagement piece um, as we think about um, you know, continuing to build our brand and putting out um, who we are and who we want to be in the world and then applying that uh, rebranding effort to a new signage package um, for wayfinding and um, you know, other, other means around town, much the way that many of our neighboring communities have. Um, so uh, we asked our school board rep, uh, Councilor Carity, uh, Parity Catanzaro, to uh, bring that issue up with the school board to see if they would be interested in partnering uh, with us to create some sort of initiative there. Uh, under miscellaneous, <clears throat> we talked about the parking meters and came to a similar conclusion that uh, having a third party uh, the city engaged a third party would be beneficial to get an, uh, feedback on whether or not um, parking meters are feasible or reasonable. Um, we had a lengthy discussion around enforcement um, and sort of a chicken and egg issue, like, you know, would enforcement, uh, better enforcement matter or not? Um, so we think enforcement's a critical piece, but agree that a third party review is good. <clears throat> uh, we also talked about the invest in eight demolition grant. Uh, the state has uh, last year was issued a hundred million dollar grant or had a hundred million dollars in grant proceeds um, in various buckets to encourage housing development in the city of New Hampshire and they still have money in their demolition grant program. This grant program enables um, municipalities to apply for grant proceeds to pay for the demolition of structures that are that is required for new housing development. Um, so there are a number of uh, developers in town who um, could qualify and could request that the city apply for this, which is likely based on staff comments. Um, but the city can also proactively um, seek these funds for demolition of properties it controls or working with um, properties that it thinks could benefit from it. So with that in mind, the committee uh, asked staff to reach out to the owners of the BP gas station in the downtown to see if there might be an opportunity for us to acquire the property for demolition of the existing building and repositioning of that site for development, um, or if the current owner would be interested in taking advantage of the program as the owner. Uh, and we also briefly discussed an agenda item that will be before us tonight, the one uh, Winter Street um, RFP and an amendment related to uh, 79E, which I will talk about when that comes up, but essentially an interpretation of eligibility. And we agreed that we think that the site is eligible for 79E. And uh, then we adjourned right around 510, I think. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. Next is Public Safety Committee, Chairman Pepin. I have nothing to report this evening. Thank you. Next is Public Works and the Environment Committee, Chairman Witham. Yeah, Public Works and Environment Committee met uh, this evening at 5 p.m. Uh, no minutes yet, so just going from memory, uh, we had a discussion and uh, brief out from Director Babinski about the uh, drainage concerns that were brought forward to us, I think at the last council meeting, the uh, erosion that's happening on the, uh, from the parking lot down to the river walk. Uh, staff did look at this, uh, uh, did identify that there is a fair amount of erosion that's taking place. Uh, they have uh, chased this over the years periodically when we have heavy rain events, particularly back to back, is when this tends to be most pronounced. Um, they agree that there's a need for some long term improvements there. Uh, the entire area is in the riparian uh, wetland buffer area. Uh, so any work that is done in that area would require permitting from uh, the state uh, DES, uh, from uh, planning board review, conservation committee review, uh, and a fair amount of oversight. Uh, they plan to work on uh, developing uh, an engineering concept to help with the, the drainage concern there. Uh, uh, and then ultimately, uh, if it gets green lighted by this council, then tee it up with all those various committees. So this will be a long-term project, uh, one that may need to be included in the budget process, if not a supplemental appropriation, because uh, it would be si some significant work. In the short term, however, uh, DPW staff will look to install uh, erosion control measures like silt stocks or things of that nature uh, that might be able to help with uh, the offflow of the water that predominantly comes from the parking area up at the top, which in and of itself is within the uh, riparian setback area. So. Uh, there'll be some short-term measures taken and long-term uh, there are some wheels in motion to address this with a more permanent fix. We had a discussion of double utility poles. Uh, staff agreed with, uh, with councilor observations that uh, there was significant progress made on removing double utility poles but that it seems to be creeping back in the other direction. Uh, we're in constant contact with both Eversource and Consolidated that owns the utility poles in the community. Um, an example of which is on Constitutional Way. All of the utility poles have been replaced. The old ones are still there. Staff is very confident those will be replaced uh, in time for the new work that's going to be happening as part of the complete streets. But we did bring to light several other examples around the community. It's constant and ongoing dialogue. We have improved our permitting process. Whenever a new utility pole goes in the ground, it does require an excavation permit. It's in the city right away. There is language in the excavation permit that talks about how the old utility pole must be removed in a certain amount of time. Uh, and staff does leverage that as uh, appropriate uh, to have the poles removed. <coughs> Where th that is a struggle is when the utility pole breaks as a result of storm damage or a motor vehicle accident. That's an emergency repair. Uh, we don't have that same leverage and there are examples of that around the community as well. So good discussion. We have good process in place. Absent, uh, you know, uh, authority from the State Public Utilities Commission, the PUC, there's likely not much more we can do at the local level other than to stay in constant dialogue and contact with the utilities. We uh, talked about our contract with Resource Management Incorporated. They remove our sludge from the city's water treatment plant. We have lagoons on site at the water treatment plant that help with filtering the water. Uh, that ultimately does create a sludge material that needs to be uh, hauled off. Uh, RMI does recycle that sludge material uh, in an appropriate fashion approved by Department of Environmental Services. There are not many companies out there that do this or that know our, our, our situation here in Summersworth. Uh, so the committee, uh, Public Works and Environment Committee, favors uh, a long-term contract with RMI. Um, I think at a reasonable price escalator, 2.5% uh, for like the next five years. So the uh, committee agreed with teeing up a resolution that we'll see at a future meeting uh, to extend that contract with them for the sludge removal at the water treatment plant. 
We had an update on the high street sidewalk and resurfacing uh, uh, project that, that we have uh, undergoing engineering right now. Again, for the public's edification, we're looking to uh, replace the entire section of sidewalk from West High Street to South Street on the westerly side of High Street, uh, sort of the mirror side to what we did uh, this past year. Uh, right now, uh, the estimates for that work are just shy of a million dollars uh, for the sidewalk work. Um, that includes a contingency. It also includes uh, engineering, inspection services, and things of that nature. The timing of going out to bid for that came up in discussion. We're a little bit late for this construction season. By the time engineering drawings are done, we go out to bid, we probably would not be in a position to award a bid until our August meeting at the earliest. And we anticipate this being a project that might take up to six months. Uh, so we'd be... Uh, we wouldn't have enough time this year. So bottom line is we're looking to tee this up for going out to bid late fall. Um, that way it would be bid uh, as part of an early package to start construction in the spring of 2025. We'd also look to include that section of High Street on our resurfacing bid for next year or as part of this bid, we're, we're still uncertain as to the best approach there. But likely this work would be done next year, uh, not this year, um, just because of the timing of, of, of everything. We did talk about, do we go out to bid right away come August? Uh, but the contractors for this work would need to do a lot of estimates on pricing amounts for materials, and they may overinflate that. Uh, so we're concerned that we wouldn't get an accurate number. So waiting until a better bidding season is, is in our best interest. Uh, Public Works Director Babinski provided us with a number of updates on, boy, a dozen or more city projects that are underway. Uh, we did talk about the traffic signal at Indigo, Blackwater Road, and High Street. Uh, that work will likely be midsummer uh, by the time parts are available and we can coordinate contractors for that work. Um, we know that roadway striping to include stop bars and crosswalks has been awarded to K-5 and that work will be scheduled as appropriate and as weather permits. So that's all in the, in the pipeline. Uh, a number of other projects that we discussed as well, uh, up to and including planting some arborvitae trees at the fire station to stop rogue traffic exiting the Little League Field parking lot. Uh, onto the fire station apron, which we can't seem to understand, but we know it happens. And according to Chief Moore, they've actually seen it on video uh, over at the fire station as well. So um, we talked about some miscellaneous items, just uh, various city projects, and we adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Recreation Committee Chairwoman Cameron. All right, thanks so much. Uh, next on the agenda is item 12, which is reports of special committees. Are there any reports of special committees tonight? Yes, Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. Traffic Safety has uh, scheduled a meeting for uh, June 12th, uh, which is Wednesday, uh, here in Council Chambers at 2 p.m. Thank you. Other reports of special committees? Yes, Councillor Goodwin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the Eyes on 30 committee met on May 22nd at 6 p.m., um, I will keep this brief. Um, we reviewed all of the previous um, uh, uh, initiatives and goals that the committee had put together in the, the prior year, as well as um, the uh, new goals um, identified by new committee members. Um, we welcomed uh, a city uh, a, a school board rep, General Soldati. So uh, that. This position has been filled finally, which is excellent. Um, so we have a, a perspective uh, representing our schools um, for for the purpose of uh, the you know updating the master plan and this committee's um, goals. Um, I won't get into the detail of all the conversation, but the high level detail is essentially we are creating a de a deliverable, a document as in the form of a, a table that will itemize um, all of the mm -hmm goals, uh, organize them in a way that uh, relates to the future master plan um, and identifies 
um, priority level and sort of responsible party. So it is uh, an actionable document that the committee can start working on and that future committees and or staff um, can use to, um, to, to project manage essentially the, uh, the, you know, the product of this committee. So, um, so essentially the, most of the conversation was creating a deliverable, talking about structure um, and prioritizing, which is all minutia, but, uh, and then we adjourned. Thank you so much. Other special committees? Yes, Councillor Parity Cat and Zero. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> the first meeting of the Community Outreach and Communications Committee met on March 28th at 5.30. Um, we discussed um, quite a few pretty small um, but significant website improvements that um, we'll be referring to the city manager to see if we can get updates on. Um, we also talked about potentially um, doing a website update, which we talked about could be as part of the Eyes on 30 agenda because they were talking about that as well. Um, there are a few um, items that we talked about that could potentially be referred to others. One of them was the question of who can work the polls if they are on the ballot. Um, we were talking about website including election officials and sort of, you know, if, if folks that are on the ballot can't work the polls, how are moderators, selectmen, and clerks to do that job and run for re-election. So that was just sort of a procedural thing. So we thought maybe government ops could look into that and clarify that. Yeah, uh, happy to refer that to government operations. Um, thank you. Uh, we talked about um, municipal best practices uh, for website and social media policies. Um, that would be another thing to refer to government ops, including um, security protocols. So a lot of times um, either um, for website or social media, there are policies in place in the city, so yeah, that would be also another thing. Also happy to refer that to government ops. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we talked about um, an idea that's been floated around and mentioned a couple of times about a welcome packet for new community members. Um, we talked about uh, potentially getting that on the website with you know a flyer and a QR code that could send folks. You know, here's here's the bus schedule, here's school events, um, all different things from the city that they could be interested in. Um, we also, oh, we talked a little bit about um, uh, researching existing policies on public input or participation in discussion at public committee meetings. Um, this came up as we had uh, some members of, of the public there who were invited to join the conversation who said there was, you know, there's always a question about whether or not the chair allows people to speak or is there a rule at all or is it totally up to the chair, um, so again. That was a government ops <laughs> thing. Also to government ops. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Loading your agenda. I know, yeah. Um, we also um, talked about getting a good regular time on the calendar that didn't conflict with other standing meetings, and we are looking at the, um, the second Tuesday of each month at 6 p.m., and that is currently on the city calendar. Um, and I'll just end by saying that, you know, we welcome members of the public to come show up Tell us what is easy to find and not easy to find when it comes to information and other ways that we could improve community outreach. Uh, we adjourned at 626. Awesome. Thank you so much. Other reports of special committees? Seeing none, I'll turn it over to the city manager to deliver his manager's report. Thank you, Honor. I included the following comments in the city manager's report for this meeting, and I'll... Uh, jump over unfinished business as res the two resolutions that may have a second reading this evening were um, reported out by the various uh, committee chairs under new business transfer between departments uh, this action is a required housekeeping administrative step in accordance with the city charter and as reported by the finance committee chair uh, we have an initial draft uh, for first reading and that's in regards to capital leases, and we went a little over on that due to um, the estimate for police taser le lease came in a little higher than anticipated. And we'll add to that as uh, necessary when we come to the second reading later in June. Uh, ordinance 1724 in regards to personnel rules and regulations, again reported out by the GovOps committee chair. Um, First reading this evening, and I recommend a public hearing for both 1724 and Ordinance 1824 regarding um, 
the deputy fire chief and, and some other administrative changes as well as the Kohler uh, wage increase uh, public hearing at the next regular council meeting on June 17th your honor without objection I think uh, it was fully uh, explained by the Finance Committee Chair, so I won't get into any uh, more detail in regard to the Me Too clause and that for the water, wastewater employees. Um, I did provide you information in regards to the cost, and the memorandum given to the Government Operations Committee was also included in your packet. Resolution 5224 regarding um, authorizing the manager to prepare a request for proposal for the sale and reuse of city-owned property, One Winter Street, formerly known as Britain's Cleaners. Again, the uh, EDC met and voted to recommend this to the full council. Uh, uh, the uh, Councilor uh, Goodwin did ask for a uh, attorney opinion, and I did provide you that confidential document in regards to um, the eligibility for an amendment that. Uh, I believe the council will be proposing this evening, and you received a copy of that um, prior to the meeting. In regards to resolution 5324, authorizing the manager to accept property adjacent to city owned property currently leased by Hideout Golf for your lot line adjustment with basically with Ron Curry and Hilltop Chevrolet. A finance committee met back in May and voted to support this resolution to the full council. And I did give you correspondence from um, Norway Plains Associates in regards to a preliminary plan for the lot adjustment, and if approved, a final plan will be submitted to the planning board for their consideration. I did give you the value of, of assessed value that would be lost if we took over that uh, additional acreage. Uh, under other, it was explained by the Finance Committee Chair regarding the water line replacement project on Main Street. So um, where this is a full policy decision in for the full council to weigh in on. We did uh, put it on the agenda with the, the mayor's approval to take a vote in regards to sanctioning the recommendation of the uh, finance committee. Under informational items, I provided you a memorandum from Michelle Mears, Director of Development Services, regarding our notification from the uh, uh, from EPA in regards to our Brownfields grant application, unfortunately, the city was not successful in this grant round. Staff will reapply in the next round. As you may recall, this involves a Main Street property, and the site is targeted to be redeveloped by Mr. David Baker. Uh, council took action to accept the parcel as part of a private, uh, public-private effort for its redevelopment. Oftentimes, it's a very competitive process, and oftentimes, including when we applied for Bretton's Cleaners, it took us a couple of rounds to uh, secure the grant. So I'm still optimistic that the next round we will fare better. I did a t uh, provide a memorandum from Police Chief Tim Macklin outlining the COSAP grant. And without objection, I will authorize the chief to move forward with his staff in securing any uh, available grant funding to provide the hiring of a police department social worker. Uh, this would provide funding for three years, uh, this position for three years, but no requirement for city funding match. Council will most likely need to take formal action once confirmation is received, along with any grant documentation that I might have to sign. Last, primary certification from Primax. I provided you a memorandum from Human Resources Manager Linda Corvo regarding the city's recertification in meeting Primax requirements for the city's commitment to risk management efforts. As a result, the city receives a 2.5% two, two discount on our workers' compensation and property liability insurance premiums. And I do thank uh, both the chief and his staff in regards to uh, pursuing that grant um, and uh, Linda for her efforts coordinating this prime designation award each year. And Michelle and staff will be working on that uh, grant. And thank you for your efforts in trying to get it this first, this uh, last round. That concludes my uh, comments, Your Honor. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, next on agenda, we have uh, item 13, which is nominations, appointments, and elections. Under nominations, appointments, and elections, in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the following are being brought forward for appointment requiring a council vote. Uh, Michael Bobinski for a reappointment as commissioner to the Stratford Regional Planning Commission with the term to expire May 2nd, 2028. And Jeremy Rhodes for reappointment as a member of the planning board with the term to expire June 2027. 
What are the wishes of the council? Yes, Councillor Witham. I move that we approve the slate of nominees. Councillor Witham moves that. to approve the slate of nominees, seconded by Councillor Vincent. Question before the council is on the confirmation of Michael Bobinski and Jeremy Rhodes. Uh, discussion. Yes, Councillor Vincent and Parody Captain Zara. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, let's talk first about uh, Jeremy Rhodes. Um, couldn't ask for a better person on planning. Just a really knowledgeable guy. He's got a few years now under his belt. Um, he's knowledgeable. He's educated, and uh, I think he does a really good job as a as an alternate for uh, counselor with him. I've been to several meetings, and I see and I watch on TV also, um, and I see how he operates. He's a really smooth operator, and um, and for Mike Vavinsky, I can't say anything but good things about Mike over there. And I think he's done a great job, and I want to continue seeing him do that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Parity Canzara. Um, yeah, I know we had this discussion at the last meeting about um, improving the process for reappointments. Um, obviously, the um, the staff reappointment to our regional planning commission makes sense to me. My question is, um, for the planning board reappointment, when would that expire, and would we be able to wait for the improved process for this particular? Um, position or not I believe his appointment expired has expired as of this June if I am not mistaken I might have to look that up um, yeah I'm getting confirmation that yes it has expired so uh, I think it might be too late at least for that particular position for the 60 was it 60 day 90 day notice um, but yes it has okay thanks Second. Councilor with him had a okay. comment first and then we'll go to thank you Councilor <coughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, concerning Mr. Rhodes, uh, Councilor Vincent uh, hit the nail on the head. Uh, this guy is good at what he does. Yeah. Uh, if we didn't have a planning board and we just had a planning person, he would be it. Uh, if I had 20 people lined up in front of me to serve on the planning board, he would be it. There is no one that's going to leapfrog in front of him from my perspective. He's that good. Right, so I have no apprehension with this appointment tonight, uh, despite a process being worked on to maybe improve the <coughs> process. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. And uh, a point of clarification: um, all the boards are appointed by the mayor. Is that is that correct, or am I wrong? I uh, select the nominee, and then you all approve the appointment. And. Um, at times, it's difficult to find people to fill these these boards, these board seats. Yeah. And um, uh, so people aren't coming out of the woodwork to uh, want to join, so to speak. So um, I'm happy with the process. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? Councilor Goodwin? <clears throat> As uh, one of the folks initiating um, a potential revision to the rules around uh, appointments and nominations. Um, I guess I would say uh, people not coming out of the woodwork is also possibly a result of positions and opens not being advertised and us not proactively seeking new voices. So um, I disagree with the assessment that uh, we should just continue to put on people that have been on because it's difficult to find people. Um, I get that we are a small community with limited resources and um, you know, those that are willing to put the effort in should be uh, engaged and uh, given that opportunity, I completely agree. I have no issue um, generally with, uh, with that, but uh, I think the process matters for transparency and the ability for new folks to come on board. So that is why uh, we are trying to um, improve the process. Uh, specifically, Jeremy, I served on planning board and I agree with the prior comments and I will be voting in favor. Thank you. Just a reminder, we will potentially have some sort of resolution or ordinance change coming toward, uh, to us about that. So let's keep our comments tonight and discussion towards the applicants, not try to get, I, I do appreciate the discussion, don't get me wrong, but I don't want to derail us too, too much. So are there other comments or discussion about our applicants this evening? Okay. Seeing none, um, if you're in favor of the motion, you'll see it by saying, Aye. 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 Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> if you're opposed, you'll stay by saying no. All right. Ayes appear to have it. Ayes have it. Nominee has been confirmed. 
or both nominees, the slate, I should say. All right, next up is item 14, uh, which is items that have been laid upon the table. We have none. Uh, next is item 15, which is unfinished business. Uh, under ordinances, we have um, ordinance 1524, which is a supplemental appropriation to design and construct a crosswalk at the northerly intersection of Constitutional Way and High Street, which if approved would amend the annual budget by appropriating an additional 57,750 to the Municipal Transportation Fund to pay for a crosswalk across High Street on the northerly side of the intersection with Constitutional Way. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on Ordinance 15-24. Ordinance number 1524, supplemental appropriation to design and construct a crosswalk at the northerly intersection of Constitutional Way and High Street. Thank you. Ordinance 15-24, having been read at first and second time, is now open to further amendment. Seeing no amendment, I will look for a motion on Ordinance 15-24. Councilor Witham. Move for its adoption. Councilor Witham moves to the adoption of Ordinance 15-24, seconded by Councilor Goodwin. Motion for the council is on the adoption of Ordinance 15-24. Is there discussion? Councilor Witham. Yeah, perhaps you had asked earlier, question for the city manager. If if this portion of the project, let's say, came in at $60,000, the contingency for the overall constitutional way project could be utilized for any overage regarding this? I don't believe so. This has to be very specific. Yeah. We, we have contingency built into this. Uh, Correct, but if number. it went beyond, we'd have to come back for an additional supplemental. Fair enough, thank you. Great. Other discussion? Yes, Councillor Parody Catanzaro. Um, yeah, just wanted to express my strong support for this and thank all of the members who both have come out to speak in favor of it and who have written in in support of it as well. Thank you. Other discussion? Councillor Goodwin. I suppose uh, now's the time that I could read uh, these the <laughs> these comments into the public record. Okay, so uh, this is from uh, an email sent to uh, Mayor Matt Gerding and myself to, uh, from John Burns, the Executive Director of SOS Recovery, uh, and they are the owner slash operator of uh, Folded the Cafe on, on High Street. Uh, good afternoon, Honorable Mayor Gerding and Councillor Goodwin. I'm writing because I'm unable to attend this evening city council meeting but would like to have my comments read in the public record i'm writing in my capacity as the executive director of sos recovery community organization and operator operator or folded community diner at 67-69 high street in Summersworth. It has come to my attention that there is a proposal to make a crosswalk to the opposite side of the intersection of constitutional constitutional way and high street at the intersection of highland street i've i also understand that the proposal for flashing lights to, to warn motorists is in the, agen in the agenda item. The majority of our restaurant employees utilize Constitutional Way for on-street parking. This is the most uh, accessible parking as they and myself are unable to, uh, excuse me, this is the most accessible parking they and myself are able to find and access conveniently. I have crossed it with my eight-year-old grandson who accompanies me to the restaurant often. The crosswalk would be more useful if it were moved to the proposed location, but more importantly, the visibility of the crosswalk creates a major safety hazard. I have tried crossing numerous times and motorists generally do not see the crosswalk and I have come close to being struck on a few occasions since we opened in October. It has also been my experience that often when motorists see us trying to cross they do so at the last moment and have braked hard enough to skid and come close to being hit from other motorists. I would like to ask the city council to improve the safety and uh, with the uh, flashing lights and signage at the current crosswalk as it is a safety hazard for my staff, myself, residents, patrons who might come in that direction. It would also make sense to move it since most individuals coming from Constitutional Way are coming on the opposite side where of, now, of where it now sits. Thank you so much and feel free to respond anytime with questions, warm regards. And then I have a second one. Okay, this one is from Madeline uh, Waisaki. Dear counselors, and this was addressed to, I think the entire city council this evening. Dear counselors, I am writing in support of the proposed, proposed crosswalk on High Street. I do hope to be there in person tonight to share my thoughts, but life with a toddler can be busy, so in case I can't make it, I wanted to make sure 
you knew the great need of this small change. As you know, before, down, before downtown revitalization, the crosswalk was indeed on the other side of the street. I think we all agree, and it is specifically reflected in our master plan that the down, downtown accessibility, pedestrian safety, and walkability is a priority. This is a small change that will make a big impact. Crossing on the opposite side of the current location is more intuitive and is in fact what most pedestrians attempt to cross uh, regardless of the designated crosswalk, which is obviously unsafe for pedestrians and annoying for drivers. Poppy Seed Studio is one of the downtown's most popular, enduring, and successful businesses. And because it is across from a bustling cafe, it is clear that the city's responsibility to ensure a safe, pedestrian-friendly, and business-friendly crosswalk. I strongly encourage you to approve this much-needed upgrade to return a crosswalk to the opposite side of the street where it once was. Regards, Madeline DeSantis Waisaki. Thank you. Uh, next we Councillor Austin and then with him. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I've spoken to a number of residents as well who support this particular um, move. I think that uh, for a long time we've talked about increasing the walkability of downtown Summersworth. It's just one of those issues that helps us do that. Um, and I spoke, I've spoken for a long time about the safety of crossing High Street. Uh, anything we can do to enhance uh, the safety of getting across that busy stretch of road there is, is something that I'm certainly in favor of, so I'm supporting this ordinance. Thank you. Councilor Witham. I, too, got a communication uh, from Dina Gagnon uh, from the gathering spot. Uh, she did not ask me to read it into the record, thankfully. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Dina, but your email was wicked long. Uh, <laughs> Folks that work with me know if you don't get it out in two sentences, I'm not reading it. But I did read yours, so you're not someone I work with. Uh, but she supports the idea of the crosswalk. There's the, the gist of the story, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Other discussion? All right. So, seeing no more. If you are in favor of the adoption of Ordinance 15-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Austin. Yes. Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Charity Catanzaro. Yes. Misho. Yes. With them. Yes. Right, ordinance 15-24 has been adopted. Uh, that brings us to resolutions under unfinished business. Uh, first up, the chair will recognize the clerk for a second reading on resolution 49-24, which is to authorize the city manager to develop proposals for metered parking in the Summersworth downtown area and the creation of a parking fund. Resolution number 49-24, to authorize the city manager to, redeve to develop proposals for metered parking in the Summersworth downtown area and the creation of a parking fund. Thank you. Resolution 49-24, uh, having been re reviewed by Finance and Economic Development Committee and being read a first and second time, is uh, open to further amendment. Seeing none, um, no amendment being offered, I will look for a motion on Resolution 49-24. <coughs> Councilor Witham. It's one of those odd ones. I move that Resolution 49-24 uh, be defeated. Right. The uh, <coughs> motion before the Council is to defeat Resolution 49-24, seconded by Councilor Austin. Uh, discussion, yes. Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm not sure if defeating it is the answer. Uh, would tabling it be a better motion after it came back from what we want to try to do by getting some numbers and so forth? Just something I'll put out to the committee or to the council. Okay, Councilor Gibson. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the discussion in committee on this resolution was that it might be better to um, have staff research um, the subject more and by obtaining a consultant to look into it rather than moving forward with this motion, which is why it's being recommended to be voted down. Yes, you are correct. Other discussion? Councilor Witham. Uh, uh, Councilor Gibson nails it. Uh, that's exactly right. Uh, did toy around with the idea of trying to 
amend this resolution to reflect that. It was just a, a lot uh, of wordsmithing, and I think it's just cleaner to come back with a new resolution once we determine a consultant and a price and just package it all neatly all at once. Uh, Thank you. Other discussion? Okay. So just to, again, make sure everyone's clear, uh, if you are in favor of defeating this, so again, uh, you will vote yes. So a yes vote will kill this uh, resolution. Uh, if you are not in favor, again, if you that would mean then you would want to keep it, you will vote no. Is everybody clear? Okay, just want to make sure. All right. Uh, with that being clear, uh, City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Cameron? Yes. Austin? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parity Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. Right. Resolution 49-24 has been defeated. Uh, chair will recognize the clerk for a second reading on Resolution 51-24, which is to authorize the city to use funding from the Municipal and Transportation Fund to amend the contract with Engine uh, Granice and Sons of Salem, Mass, and Wright Pierce Engineers of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to design and construct a crosswalk on the northerly side of the intersection of Constitutional Way and High Street. City Clerk. Resolution number 5124, to authorize the city to use funding from the Municipal and Transportation Fund to amend the contracts with N. Granice and Sons of Salem, Massachusetts, and Wright Pierce Engineers of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to design and construct a crosswalk on the northerly side of the intersection of Constitutional Way and High Street. Thank you. Resolution 51-24, having been read a first and second time, is now open to further amendment. No amendment being offered. I will look for a motion on Resolution 51-24. Councilor Goodwin. I'll make a motion to approve it. Councilor Goodwin moves to adopt uh, Resolution 51-24, seconded by Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Again, the motion before the Council is on the adoption of Resolution 51-24. <coughs> Discussion? Okay. Seeing none. If you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 51-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Austin. Yes. Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Parity Cotton Zero. Yes. Misho. Yes. Witham. Yes. All right. Resolution 51-24 has been adopted. Uh, brings us to number 17. I think I got my numbers mixed up today. Um, which is new business. Um, first, uh, the chair will recognize the clerk for a first reading on Ordinance 16-24, transfer between departments. City Clerk. Ordinance number 1624, transfer between departments. Be it ordained by the City of Summersworth pursuant to Section 7.7D of the City Charter that the following general fund unencumbered balance transfer be made. $1,253 from contingency to other expenses capital leases. This ordinance shall take effect upon passage. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Don, Donald Austin, Kenneth Vincent. Approved City Attorney. Thank you. Ordinance 16-24 have been read a first time will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting, at which time we'll have a public hearing. Um, Your Honor? Yes, Councilor Witham. For the next two ordinances, 1724 and 1824, I'd like to move that council rules be suspended and read both by title only. Councilor Witham moves to suspend, uh, to read ordinance 17-24 and 18-24 by title I'll second only. That. Second. second. Second by Councilor Vincent. So again, the motion before council is to suspend council rules to read ordinances 17-24 and 18-24 by title only. Is that debatable? Can't remember. Okay, discussion. <laughs> Thank you, parliamentarian. <laughs> All right, seeing no discussion, uh, we will do a roll call vote on the suspension of rules. If you are in favor of suspending council rules, you will vote by saying yes. If you are not, you will vote by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? roll? Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Austin. Yes. Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Parity Cotton Zero. Yes. Micho. Yes. Great. We have suspended council rules. Uh, so chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading by title only on ordinance 17-24 to amend chapter four, personal rules and regulations, appendix one, assignment of class to grade. Ordinance number 1724, to amend chapter four, personnel rules and regulations, appendix one, assignment of class to grade. 
Thank you. Ordinance 17 24 hasn't been read at first time, will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting, at which time we will have a public hearing. Uh, chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading by title only on Ordinance 18 24 to amend Chapter 4 Personnel Rules and Regulations Appendix 2, Compens uh, excuse me, Compensation Schedule. City Clerk. Ordinance number 1824 to amend Chapter 4 Personnel Rules and Regulations Appendix 2, Compensation Schedule. Thank you. Ordinance 18 24 have been read a first time, will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting, at which time we will have a public hearing. All right, brings us to resolutions. Chair recognizes the city clerk for a first reading on resolution 52 24 to authorize the city manager to prepare a request for proposal for the sale and reuse of city owned property located at 1 Winter Street, formerly known as Breton Cleaners. City clerk. Resolution number 5224, to authorize the city manager to prepare a request for proposal for the sale and reuse of city-owned property located at 1 Winter Street, formerly known as Breton, Breton's Cleaners, June 3, 2024. Whereas the Economic Development Committee has reviewed the status of city-owned property located at 1 Winter Street, formerly known as Breton's Cleaner, and concluded it would support economic development, provide much needed housing in Summersworth, and build the Summersworth tax base, to proceed with a targeted request for proposal for the sale and reuse of the property that includes the following terms and conditions. The city agrees to maintain and pay for the ongoing monitoring wells for not less than 30 years, and the city will survey and record a utility easement for the city-owned sewer main bisecting the site, and the city will survey and record a maintenance easement for the granite retaining wall supporting the city-owned right-of-way known as Winter Street, and such easement shall retain maintenance and replacement obligations for this retaining wall in perpetuity. And the city is seeking housing-based mixed-use proposals that provide general conformance with the intent of the form-based codes, which shall be a two- or three-story structure that contextually relates to the downtown and historic district standards. And the city shall recognize the dimensional limitations of the site and anticipates projects that range from 2 to 12 housing units with access accessory commercial space on the ground floor and will support the selected developer's attainment of appropriate waivers from the zoning board of adjustment and or planning board if required. And applicants must provide their qualifications and submit a track record of completing similar projects and the city will support the sale of the parcel for one dollar with a covenant ensuing ensuring project completion and occupancy within three years of closing now therefore be it resolved by the city council of the city of summersworth that the city manager is authorized to prepare a request for proposal for the sale and reuse of city-owned property located at one winter street formerly known as Brenton's Cleaners, including the aforementioned terms and conditions, and to take any other action necessary to complete the action determined to be in the best interest of the city. Sponsored by Councilors Paul Goodwin, Richard Michaud, David Gibbs, sorry, Robert Gibson, <laughs> Crystal Parody Catanzaro, approved city attorney. <laughs> Thank you. The, that came from. <laughs> no, I've, I've been <laughs> saying his name today too for Goodwin, I don't know. Bob, you're just like the man of the night, I guess. <laughs> hey, what can I say? <laughs> um, resolution, what was that, 52-24, haven't been read a first time, will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on resolution 53-24 to authorize the city manager to accept property ad adjacent to city-owned property currently leased to Hideout Golf, Inc. via a lot line adjustment from... Uh, 385 Route 16 Realty Corp doing business as Ron Courier and Hilltop Chevrolet. City Clerk. Resolution number 5324 to authorize the city manager to accept property adjacent to city owned property currently leased by Hideout Golf Inc. via a lot line adjustment from 385 Route 16 Realty Corp doing business as Ron Courier and Hilltop Chevrolet. June 3, 2024. Whereas the owner of 385 Route 16 Realty Corp doing business as Ron Courier and Hilltop Chevrolet has contacted city staff with an offer to convey approximately 2.25 acres of property through a lot line adjustment. And whereas the property is adjacent to property owned by the city of Summersworth and is leased to Hideout Golf Inc. and is operated as the Oaks Golf Course. And whereas the property is unusable for commercial purposes, but does provide a desirable natural resource due to a stream that flows west toward High Street and is a natural corridor for wildlife. And whereas 385 Route 16 Realty Corp 
will cover expenses for plan preparation and recording fees relative to the transfer of said property to the city and are requesting a waiver for lot line adjustment application free fees from the city. And whereas city staff reviewed the offer to convey this property to the city of the city of Summersworth with the finance committee and they support accepting the property via a lot line adjustment. Now therefore be it resolved by the city council of the city of Summersworth that the city manager is authorized to accept property adjacent to the city owned property currently leased by Hideout Golf Inc. via a lot line adjustment from 385 Route 16 Realty Corp doing business as Ron Courier and Hilltop Chevrolet, including waiving of fees of city fees pertaining to a lot line adjustment application and to take any other actions relative to this issue determined to be in the best interest of the city. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Martin Pepin, approved city attorney. Thank you. Resolution 53-24, having been read a first time, will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Um, under other, tonight we also have a vote <coughs> to move forward with the Main Street Waterline Replacement Project under the city's right of way and to forego the section of Waterline starting at approximately Nato Street and ending at the Summersworth Rollinsford Town Line, uh, which is the NHDOT right of way. Um, I will open it up to discussion first and then we'll look uh, essentially for a roll call vote, yes or no, on the proposal. Um, discussion from council. All right, seeing none, that will bring us to our roll call vote. Um, if you are in favor of this, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Parody Catanzaro. Yes. Misho. Yes. Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Austin. Yes. All right. Proposal has been accepted. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda is my number's all wrong. Number 18, uh, which is comments by visitors. City Council and the Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinions and views at Council meeting. In accordance with Council Rule 7-C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the Council wishes to suspend the rules. Speaker shall not enter into debate with any person, the Mayor, Council members, City Manager, or Department Heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak this evening? Wishes to speak. All right. Seeing no, we'll move on to Agenda Item 18, which is closing comments by Council members. I can't remember where I started last time, so I'm going to start to my right over here at large. Councillor Witham. Fair enough. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Economic development, the, the, uh, the, the, the work product they're contemplating regarding rebranding, uh, certainly no objection to any of that work. We did go through a rebranding exercise maybe five or six years ago with a consultant, so hopefully we can pick up on some of that uh, work so it's not just uh, caution to the wind on that. Um, in fact, I think the mayor used some of that rebranding in your political advertisement. The eye and girding was the the, the city's out, the outline. Yeah, the, of the outline city's, of the yeah. city, which yeah. looks like a uh, a crown. Yeah. So there you go. Um, as we talk about you know parking meters and parking enforcement, uh, and I've lamented before. Our, our parking enforcement needs to be more. I know there's only so much we can do with a part-time parking enforcement officer, but some of it is like in your face, even without a parking enforcement officer. When there's a two hour time limit for parking and it's snowed and the car sits there all day and hasn't been cleaned off, I'm not sure that you have to put chalk on the tire to figure out that the car hasn't been moved. Uh, more recently, there's been a truck parked on High Street in the two-hour time limit parking. Um, some sort of a business that deals with cremations. Uh, I don't think there are a lot of those trucks out there. Uh, and it occurs to me that it's pretty easy to see that it sits there all day in a two-hour parking zone. So maybe just some of those obvious ones we can do better with. And lastly, Your Honor, I don't know where the hate the bigotry comes from. Uh, I'm appalled uh, by it. Uh, I can't believe it exists in our world, never mind in our state or in our community. Uh, uh, I am proud to call you our mayor. I am proud to call you a friend. Uh, I am proud that you are an educator in our community. Uh, 
please keep your head high and know that there are many of us that uh, are, are very welcoming and do not uh, share in such hate and bigotry. Thank you. I do know that. Thank you very much. Councilor Goodwin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess I'll, I'll echo the sentiments made earlier. Happy Pride Month uh, to, uh, to the members of the LGBT community uh, here in town, of which I am a proud member. Um, and uh, thank you, uh, Your Honor, for sharing um, so bravely and uh, vulnerably your experiences. Um, I think pretty much every out queer person has similar stories that we could share. Um, you know, I won't pile on. I want to talk about you know more positive things or more productive things, but I also have experiences uh, I could share that have happened here in our community um, and elsewhere. And um, I guess it's just an uncomfortable reminder to those that are not in the LGBT community or a person of color or another marginalized group that there are people that are regularly under threat um, in your community. And your perception of that um, is colored by your, your individual experience, obviously. But um, trust um, folks that are in those communities when they tell you um, that they need protecting and that we need to work together to ensure um, our safety and productivity and that we can contribute in uh, the many fantastic ways that all of these communities do contribute to our society. Um, I will say that Summersworth, in my perspective, is a very welcoming community at large. We are an incredibly diverse community. One of the, the things that makes us so diverse is there's a shocking number of queer people in this city, um, to the point that my queer friends that live in Portsmouth are like, what's in the water in Summersworth? Um, so you know, it's, so it's, it's noteworthy that we um, have attracted and retained this community here, and I want to um, continue to, um, you know, encourage that uh, that openness. Um, and I, I guess I also just acknowledge um, I feel very privileged, and I talk to I have many friends out of state, particularly in uh, Massachusetts, where I went to school and worked for a time, and they often remark like, "Oh, you moved back to New Hampshire. Like, how's that going as a queer person?" <laughs> um, and uh, and then, you know, I go, you know what? I actually have a, a gay congressman. I have a trans state rep. The mayor is gay, and I am not the only gay city councilor. And they, and there are queer people on our school board, and we are out and we are proud, and the community knew who we were when they elected us, and they're here to support us, and they uh, value our voices and our contributions. And I, I gotta tell you, I didn't have that representation in Massachusetts. so. Um, be proud of, of what we've accomplished, it, um, but also be aware that there is so much more to do and, um, and things to protect. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Cameron. Thank you. Um, it, it does sadden me that these remarks are still going around about people and you love who you love. And I'm sorry that some people just find criticism with that, can't accept it. Um, I have a lot of gay friends and I love each and every one of them. Um, I'm from an older generation that you didn't talk about things like that growing up. But as you get older and you see different things, you learn different things and I'm proud to say my friends are my friends and Mayor Matt is one of them, has been for a long time. Um, I've known Paul for a long time. I've known Crystal for a long time. And I'm proud to say that you're my friends. I have no qualms about that. I love all of you. On a next note, uh, the Children's Festival is June 15th. And um, the Friday night event is the 14th. So come out, out, support the community, support the festival. My Don't Trash Summersworth is on the same day. And we are going to volunteer our hour of time to the festival. I've been a board member of the festival for a long time, and I felt it was only appropriate to support the festival that day, besides what I do in the morning, then to check in. Um, congratulations to the graduates of 2024. Um, that's coming up this week. A lot of graduations this week. Rochester, Dover, Summersworth. I don't know how they planned that, but man, they're all on the same day. And on my last note, 
I've been involved with a conversation around Will and Pond, and no, it's not about the homeless. It has to do with people walking their dogs out there and off leash. And I was for a time wanting to possibly discuss having off leash from seven to nine. But as I got involved with these conversations with people that are out there, a lot of the time, people are going out there off leash no matter when, what. And it's not fair to the residents that like to walk out there, like to go out there with the kids. Everybody could say the dog is friendly. I could tell you my dog's friendly, but at any given moment, something could set him off. My dog's always on a leash out there. Um, but I have been out there when I've been out there with Fenway and dogs have come up to me and I'm like, okay, I'm holding him tight because I don't know what this dog is. I don't know where the owner is. Oh, they're okay, they're okay. Well, no, they're not okay. Leash your dogs when you're out there, please. We have a number of residents that are getting upset, don't want to go out there because of it, and that's not fair. It's so pretty out there. It's a nice walk. I, I just don't know what else to do with that, but say, please leash your dogs. Otherwise, we may have to look into some other solution. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Austin. Thank you, Your Honor. A um, few things tonight. First of all, you know, hatred, bigotry has no place. You gain nothing by acting that way. Um, you gain nothing personally, you gain nothing against the person that you've targeted. Uh, it just has no place. I think that, you know, my philosophy, and I think Somersworth has in general a philosophy to accept people for who they are, where they are. I, um, Council Goodwin spoke to that, and I think that, uh, rightly so, I think that in this community we are an accepting group of people. Uh, we've worked hard over the last decade to be, become a welcoming city. Um, and I think we've seen that uh, in, you, with whatever type of population you're talking about. Uh, labels are not effective. Hatred is not effective. Let's just be people and accept people for who they are. Uh, I'll echo my congratulations to the graduates, and the, I know the top ten have been announced, and uh, congratulations to them. That's a lot of work to be named in the top ten of your graduating class, so congratulations to them. Uh, and if the counselors will forgive me a moment, uh, I was not here for all the budget discussions, uh, but I do want to comment on a couple of things here. First of all, the end of the school year marks the end of SYC. Uh, I am saddened by that, quite honestly. I think that, um, you know, that's a program in Somersworth that has ex existed for almost two decades now. Uh, the majority of the time it was grant funded, but a, a few years ago the federal restrictions were so tight on that money that uh, the community decided to take that over entirely within the city budgets uh, and primarily the school budget. Um, in fact, if you councils will remember that uh, joint resolution was passed when that decision was made by both the city council and the school board to continue to support SYC uh, in whatever ways we could. And the council set up a, a special line item in the budget uh, to support that. Well, that's all gone now. It will end the end of the school year. And I'm very disappointed by that. And I know that the school district has gone to some length to uh, find replacements with the YMCA. Um, and that's fine, it's gonna be more expensive to people who use it than it would have been if SYC had remained in place. Um, so I'm, I'm just disappointed to see that finally uh, go away after all these years of serving uh, students that really need those services, whether it's after school, whether it's summer, whether, you know, whatever services uh, they received, uh, some of those students will no longer be able to afford those services and uh, that's, that's too bad. Uh, on that same topic, um, I, I happened to get a uh, Facebook message today, as a matter of fact, that included the superintendent's letter that went out to parents uh, in the middle of May announcing the end of SYC. Um, and I was a little disturbed that that letter opened up by blaming the city council for not providing funding for SYC. Uh, 
I did respond to the individual who had that post out there, and I just want to clarify the record here that City Council has nothing to do with the specific funding decisions made for the school district. We have bottom line authority for the providing a, an appropriation to the school board, and they can do with it as they wish. They could have chosen to continue SYC had they wished to do that. Uh, and I think it's disingenuous of the superintendent to lay blame at the foot of the city council to, uh, to mean that SYC is no longer uh, available to students. I think that that's, you know, the school board needs to own that decision and own up to it and recognize that there are consequences associated with that. So I just want to set the record straight there. Thank you. Thank you. Except Councillor Pepin. Yes, uh, Mayor, I, I echo everything that the, our fellow council members have said, and I hope you know that I feel the same way as they do about it. Uh, I am very proud that the majority of this, uh, citizens feel the same way about it because they do it on Election Day, and I'm very proud of that. On, a, on another note, though, um, I don't know how to say this. Um, I have served on this council, probably the longest council member sitting in here on this board, and I've had people come up to me and say, you know, well, you ought to move on for somebody else new to move on because they have different ideas or whatever, and that's fine. Um, and they're entitled to their opinion and everything else. Um, I've tried to do my best for this city of Somersworth as a council mem member and represent my 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 ward as, as best as I can. And so far, the voters have had confidence in me to elect me back in, in, in office. This is my last term. I am not running again any anymore. But I, I want to say this because it makes you kind of feel like it does. It, it puts me in an uneasy feeling to say, "Why should I even bother?" All right, and and that's why I'm. This is where I'm coming from because it makes what's making me feel. And I'm in full agreement of trying to get more applicants to fill in these positions and whatever. But I hope there is some considerations to the people that are being nominated that work their tail off, and probably some of them have lived in summers with all their lives, and have dedicated their whole heart and soul into this community and basically be told that you're serving on, you serve on a committee and you're not wanted because you've been there too long. Uh, I think as an elected official, I think the people in my ward give me the opportunity to make the decisions of which people sit on the, sit on the boards because they trust in my judgment and hopefully the rest of the city council is here in, in their vote. But I don't want to discourage somebody that's given their heart and soul and everything that they can and turn around and, and kind of like feel that they're not wanted in this community. And I kind of feel like sometimes this conversation of, of asking people to apply for a job, that it doesn't turn off the people that have dedicated their lives and their knowledge and, and turn them off from even applying in the future or even wanting to serve this city. And I, and I believe, um, that's where I'm, I'm leading my concern. So I just want to echo that. Um, I, I don't mean to take it in a way that we shouldn't go out there and, and recruit people. I mean that. But I don't want to put it to the point that the people that we have, that as people that we have, that have been serving on our committees for nothing, basically, because I, I think they probably get a lunch, that's about it, once a year, uh, for thanks. And, and, and say, just because you served on the board for three or four terms or whatever it is, it's time for you to move on or, or discuss that. So uh, I guess that's what my concerns are, and I just want to echo that um, in the, for the future. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Ron. I'll take off from uh, Councillor Pepin's. And sometimes when you go to change those, you have organizations, and I don't mean any disrespect to you, Councillor, uh, at all. Um, you have little groups and organizations that want to get people in to change things, and you have that. Uh, that's some of the things I've seen serving at the state level uh, and in city government. Um, that's what I have to say for that. Um, you know, I've traveled all around the world, or around the United States and the world, but, and uh, I just need to say this. There is more good people in this world than there are bad people. It's just that. All the bad people get the publicity. That's the sad thing about it. Thank you. Thank you. 
except Councillor Gibson. A lot of good things have been said here tonight, um, and I'm in full agreement with everything that's been said. And I'll be honest, I don't understand a lot about the community. Um, but my attitude about that is let people live their life. If they don't interfere with me, I haven't got a problem with them. And I think that's what it should be. But I think our problems are coming from that at the national level in particular, it has been allowed to become open game on, I'm sorry, open season on anybody who does not agree with you. And that's not what this country was supposed to be about. Though if you go back far enough, you do have the duels between some of the leaders, but yeah, we're past that, I thought. Um, so where we need change is at the national level. We need people that care about this country and care about the people that live in it. And we need to get rid of the people who are dragging the country and our people down. Because what we see in communities like ours is the result of that. Um, I do agree with the counselors to my right about people who have served if somebody has served on a board, done good work on that board, they deserve to be allowed to continue serving the community if they want to. What the goal of recruitment is to get different people involved, but not at the expense of the people that have put in their time, their energy, and their care to this community in the past. That is not our intent when we do that sort of thing. Um, and I guess I'll shut up at that point. Thank you. Councillor Parody Catanzara. Yes, thank you. Um, a couple of things um, regarding the SYC, and I, I know that everybody here loves that program, and we had a lot of conversations with the school board, um, and I just want to let folks know that they're, um, the program that we'll be replacing does have um, a few more benefits, including some scholarships that are available. Um, so if folks can't afford that program, there will be um, scholarships available to them. So hopefully folks that think they can't afford that will look into those. Um, in regards to the improvement processes, I don't think term limits are being discussed. I think we're just trying to make sure that uh, folks know that the openings are available, that there's full transparency, um, and that the people who've been doing this for a long time, it sounds like a lot of them are, are really qualified and would be at the top of that list in a meritocracy anyway. Um, let's just make sure that um, people know that those openings are coming up. Um, I really think Mayor Girding for sharing tonight. Um, I think it's really important and I really appreciate all the kind words that everyone has said about you know, supporting people regardless and, and just being kind neighbors and I think that's always, always appropriate. Um, I think one of the reasons that it's really important to still have pride and to still talk about these things is there are things that you may never even think about um, if you're not a member of the LGBTQ community. Um, you'll note that my nameplate is much longer <laughs> this year, uh, this term. In fact, they had to get a longer plate to fit my last name, Parody Catanzaro. Um, one of the considerations that my wife and I had when we were deciding who takes whose name, do we change our names at all, is if we have the same last name, which is what we ended up going with, both of us have the same very long last name, um, it provides just a little bit more legal protection. Um, there have been Supreme Court decisions and Supreme Court um, statements by sitting members of the Supreme Court that want to overturn some of the protections, including if my wife becomes ill and is in a hospital, I may not be able to visit her if gay marriage gets overturned. 
Um, I hope it doesn't come to that, but these are things that are being battled out that unfortunately, even though the majority of people do not want to see those protections going away, if we do not pay attention, they may anyway. Um, so thank you to my fellow counselors who have uh, spoken up about um, love and diversity. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, lastly, Councillor Mishu. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just want to say I am deeply saddened for the comments that you read this evening and the subject between that affects you and your family. It's uncalled for, it's not right, and you're a much better person. You are well loved in this community, just remember that. Two, I want to say uh, thank you to uh, Susan Tierney. She's retiring or stepping down from the school board from Ward 3. Susan is a person I have gotten to know over the past several years. She's a very nice person, and I know she has some exciting things happening in her life, so I wish her luck and happiness. And uh, what Councilor Austin said about uh, the school board superintendent blaming that us on the city council didn't give him enough money, um, so he has to cut these. I do recall that when they came in front of us, he had like three different tiers. We funded two out of the three and most of it was on certain items. So what we funded, we were hoping they would keep funded. They didn't. He just picked and chose what he wanted, and now he's coming back and blaming us. So I'm not happy with that personally. I have a lot of other things I would like to say about that superintendent, but this is not the time and place for it. We've been here almost, or I've been here since 5 o'clock this evening, so Four hours is long enough, so it's time to wrap it up and go home. Everybody have a good evening. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hold on. Yeah, we always do this. I know. <laughs> jumping. You're jumping. Um, we have... Uh, thank you, everybody, by the way. Uh, item... What are we? 20? Nope, that was 20. We've been, been off by one every day. 21. Wait, future agenda items. Where is that? No, we don't have... Oh yeah, 20, future agenda items, yes. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm losing it. It's a long day. Um, there were four noted throughout the meeting, so I just want to repeat them, that there was a discussion about polls and election officials that will go to government ops, a social media policy and the existence thereof uh, to government ops, uh, how to have public comment at committee meetings, uh, also to government ops, and then a parking resolution to finance. Are there any other future agenda items we need to no talk about? I know, sorry, government ops. <laughs> All right, seeing none, we're gonna go to uh, number 20, which is, or 21, excuse me, which is non-public, which we do not have tonight. And last is adjournment. We're gonna say, Councilor Gibson moves to the City Council to stand in adjournment, seconded by Councilor Cameron. Question for the Council is adjournment. If you're in favor, please say it by saying aye. Aye. If you're opposed, say it by saying aye. no. Aye. All right, we are adjourned, thank you.